Chelsea against Real Madrid. It's live on Talk Sports. Frank Lampard's side look to come back from 2-0 down. Can you can you see that happening, Benny? I mean, they're going through a wretched run of form at the moment, aren't they? Do you know what? Strange things have happened because we've seen them win the Champions League when they've not necessarily been the best team in the tournament, um, which sounds bonkers because they win it. But they're going to have to... The way they started against Real Madrid... Um, I thought, oh, OK, when Jao Felix went clean through early on, missed the chance. Listen, he's put all his eggs in that one basket. He dropped a lot of players at the weekend when they got smashed by Brighton. He's going to bring them all back. And I expect Real Madrid to win this, but I'm not saying it's a foregone conclusion. Absolutely not, because Stamford Bridge would be rocking. Um, they got the result against Dortmund when I didn't think they would. I know Real Madrid did talk about the European champions, won this competition more than anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but I expect Real Madrid to win. But I, would, I wouldn't be coming in there tomorrow. Do you mean win the tie or win the win game? Win the tie. Right. But I wouldn't... Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Chelsea won tonight, but I still went out. Right, OK. OK. Um, it's, I think it's all about that first goal. I know you said that Stamford Bridge could be rocking. Mm. If they go one down early, Chelsea, they'll start yeah. booing and... Uh, well, and listen, and, and Golo Kante, he's, he's going to be key for it because obviously he's what kind of brings it all together, doesn't yeah. he? Thiago Silva back there. Um, but they're going to have to start incredibly quick. They're going to have to get in Real Madrid's faces, put them under pressure. They're going to have to unsettle that midfield three of, who's it going to be? Modric, Cruz and one other, Valverde. They're, mm-hmm. going, to have, they're going to have to get in their faces, you know what I mean? press high up, really go for it. But as I said, I expect Real Madrid to win, but I wouldn't be coming in here tomorrow and think going, oh my goodness, wow. Can you believe Chelsea beat Real Madrid? It wouldn't be that. No, OK. Um, have a listen to this. Jim White was alongside Alex Crook on White and Jordan. Uh, he revealed the message he'd received from the Chelsea ownership this morning. The message I get is it fair or unfair for the ownership to pitch up in the home dressing room afterwards and to open dialogue with the players when things aren't going well? The message tells me, I don't know if it's fair or unfair. All we ask is that the players fight for the fans who invest their money, time and energy in the players. We care about winning on and off the pitch. I don't necessarily know what part of Chelsea ownership that was from this morning, but it's it's all to do with, of course, what's going on behind the scenes. It's to do with Todd Bowley going into the dressing room after the game and giving certain players a rollicking. What do you make of that when the owner comes down? Into Is it, as a player, is it somewhere where you're always surprised to see an owner in the dressing room? Yeah, I mean, it, listen, it happened to me. when we, I was at Derby County at the time. Um, and we had an FA Cup game against Hartlepool on the Saturday. Now, Mel Morris has already booked the the boys to go on like a, uh, a mid-season training camp in Dubai right so but we had to beat Hartlepool just because of the way we had Reading, Reading on the Tuesday mm. and Hartlepool on the Saturday but we had to beat Hartlepool because the way that the fixtures would have kind of come together that we had a, a sustained amount of time off so then he'd booked us to go to Dubai so everyone was buzzing so Paul Clements had already made changes for the game against Hartlepool anyway we make hard, hard work of it by the way go 1-0 down come back and win 2-1 Lads are buzzing. Absolutely. We've won. We've won 2-1 against Hartlepool. Yeah. Yeah. The lads are absolutely buzzing. So we know we're going to Dubai to train. We play Reading on the Tuesday. And don't play well. Don't. We're not a great result. We, we draw. We don't get smashed. We draw 1-1. But it wasn't a good team performance. weren't great. We come back in after the game. Mel Morris is in there just doing paces around the dressing room. Paces around the dressing room. As all the players got in, he just starts screaming like, what that rubbish performance that was. Uh, this is a disgrace. You're not going to forget about going to Dubai now. And like, just going ranting, going crazy. And like, it wasn't like we lost. We drew 1 1. But when, as I said, I, I think back now to that scenario, and I almost feel like because we had a good team then and we were going for promotion, he was more annoyed because he'd invested this money. We had to get promoted. And we know what happened to Derby when it comes to financial mm. regulations, after, obviously afterwards. But he was just pacing around that dressing room. Got absolutely ballistic while the manager just stood there. Didn't make us go to Dubai. He'd already booked it. Didn't let us go to Dubai. It was damn, honestly crazy. It's bizarre, isn't it? It was bizarre because, to be fair, when he went out, a lot of the players were looking at the managers as if to say, are you going to allow him to just... So, so Paul Clement had no idea he was coming no, in? No. And, and after he left, after Mel Morris left the dressing room, mm. was was Clement a little bit embarrassed? Was he, was he like, right, okay, I, I, you've heard what he's... I think, no, I think he gave his part. He's... His speech, what he thought about the performance. Yeah. Um, he said we weren't good enough, but I mean, remember Paul Clements got sacked when we were what third or fourth, which is bonkers as well mm. in itself. But I think he was almost, I think he was almost shocked because he thought, "What? Like, yeah, how, it's bizarre. Why are you coming on? We didn't lose." Have a listen to this. This is the Chelsea boss, Frank Lampard. He's been speaking ahead of his side's Champions League quarter final second leg against Real Madrid live on Talk Sport tonight. Straight after us, he said he's got no problem with Todd Bowley coming into the dressing room after matches. Yeah, I, I am comfortable with that. For me. There's maybe some criticism of the 
our old owner of, of not coming to the games and not being around. And that wasn't always true, to be fair. But I think um, when an owner is very vested in their interest in the team and wanting to help and improve, I think it's their prerogative to, to have the input that they want. I remember the moments as a player of owners first coming into dressing rooms actually happened here at Chelsea and it never really happened to me before and I remember being really happy that the owner you know you could touch them you could high five them you could listen to them and feel them so I don't think that's a bad thing in terms of the identity of the club and where you want to get to so I have no problem with it if an owner comes in and wants to be positive wants to speak to the players um, then I think it's absolutely his part to do that why would you ever want to high five an owner I th- and feel him that was one thing he said Look, this is my take on it right Frank Lampard is the manager mm-hmm. right the owner Todd Bowley has brought in a manager to manage to come up with tactical decisions to mm-hmm. come up with substitutions to pick the 11 to pick the formation and he's done it because the owner doesn't know too much about football of course yeah how on earth an owner thinks he's got any divine right to go into that dressing room and tell those players where they're going wrong is Unbel- he probably doesn't even know the offside rule himself. Do you know what? I think he, I just sorry, Benny. I just think it's nuts. As soon as you start letting, not letting, because it's their club. But as soon as we start seeing owners going into dressing rooms and having a, a rollup with players, it's all of a sudden where the game. But, but that's where it is. I think some some owners, and I kind of got that feeling with Mel Morris a little bit, and that rant is that because he'd invested so much money into it, he owned the football club. He felt yeah, like yeah, he, part he, of that investment is the manager. I know, but he felt like he had the right to do that because of the money he'd invested. It almost feels like Todd Bowley's doing the same thing because he spent near enough. 600 million in such a short space of time um, he feels he's got the right to go and do that but when you look at American sports anyway the owners are heavily invested with the team whether it be at training or I mean Mel Morris used to watch training pretty much I mean his was a different story because he, he he put these things a camera system where he could watch training from his house all this kind of crazy stuff mm-hmm. but when you look at the American market which is what Todd, Todd Bowley's come from it's one of them where the owners of the, 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 the franchises are very heavily involved in the change. You will see them in the change rooms, see them at training. So maybe from the, his background, that's normal. But when you look at Premier League football or football, not even just Premier League, by the way, EFL football as well, non-league, that's a, a weird okay. thing to do. OK, let, let me ask this. Danny Simpson, who played uh, fullback for Leicester, yeah. right? he won't mind me reading this out. He's just texted me. He says, Leicester was all about the owner coming in to give us a lift or have a strong word. We absolutely loved it, right? Mm. Now, okay, that completely contradicts what I've been saying, but I, I would imagine for that season, and Leicester's a different field, I just got the feeling that the owners, everyone sort of loved the owners at Leicester, right? Mm-hmm. We saw them when they won the FA Cup, they were there holding the cup, and they went through that incredible period where they won the league, so there was that togetherness, yeah. not just with the club, but the Obviously owners. Obviously, they suffered tragedy as well. Yeah, I just don't feel, so I agree with Danny there, right? Mm-hmm. I just don't feel that Todd Bowley yet, yet, has any right to go into that dressing room. He, he doesn't know about football. I just feel like he, he supersedes the manager when he does yeah. that. He, he's almost like stepping over the manager, listen, you sit down, I'm going to talk. It, yeah. Undermines him a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I'm not one for it. I don't think it... Um, I don't think it comes across well. But as I said, maybe he feels because he's invested 600 million, he can pretty much do yeah. what he wants. But I'm telling you, the American market is completely different to the English yeah. market. Yeah. And in America, American franchises mm. and sport, that's normal. Okay, uh, we want to hear from you, Chelsea fans and football fans, about whether or not you think it's okay for the owner to come into the dressing room after a game, not to celebrate. I've got no problem with the celebrations because it's all happy yeah, and well course. done, pats on the back. But to come in and 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 single out certain players, which I I know for a fact has happened in that Chelsea. Let me ask room. you a question. Yeah, if you were the owner, yeah, and you'd invested six hundred million, yeah, would you feel you've got a right to go into the dressing room? No, I would. I would get the manager, and and if I had a problem with anything to do with the players I'd get the manager up that's my contract is with the manager mm. my deal is with him you so can't I don't know if, you, if I invest 600 million know, but, 600 million okay, I'm thinking but, boy but how, you know, okay, and, they, how, and they're not running around right, but how is Todd Bowley going to say to let's say um, Raheem Sterling mm. how is he going to tell Raheem Sterling what he's doing wrong okay, he hasn't got a clue about football I get football. that but listen when you even listen, that is a lot of money by the way 600 milli. No, I know that. But he's probably saying to Raheem Sterling like hey pick the ball up and run into the third quarter no that's probably what he's <laughs> honestly, saying honestly he's not. Uh, Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.